Hello. Hey, how are you doing? I'm good, you. Can you hear me? How are you doing, Miss Anaya? I'm good. How are you? <coughs> Miss Anaya, how are you doing? Jaden, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Are you hearing me? Okay, um, we can start. Um, today we'll be working on um, the mean variance and standard deviation uh, for, a, for a probability distribution. So I'm going to share my screen and then we'll start. Uh, I'm gonna close all this. Okay, um, just one minute, let me make sure everything is working properly here. Just one minute. All right, let's begin. Now I'm sure you can, I'm sure you can see my screen. Like I said, our topic today will be the mean, variance, and standard deviation of a probability distribution. Now, um, there are formulas we use for finding this. I'm gonna go to the other side so I can write down the formulas since I cannot, this place will not allow, allow me to write them the right way, okay? So I'm gonna go take you to the other work, uh, book, uh, workbook so we can write this thing out and then paste it here. The next thing that we're doing is to use them. Um, so do our calculations. All right, now taking you to that workbook for a probability distribution the formula for the mean, which is also the average. The mean or average, which is uh, represented by the symbol. Um, you can find the symbol right here. Mm, mu, we call it mu equals are the sum of x, sum of x uh, times the probability of x. Yeah, sum of x times the probability of x. That give us the mean. Um, so I will, now I will paste the formula at the right place. I'll take you to that section where I can paste it. Yeah, this well, I will book sometimes it doesn't allow you to put some characters in. Okay, so the mean is sum of x times the probability of x. Now the variance. The formula we use for the variance, I will take you back to that place so you can get the variance. Variance, which will present with the symbol delta. Um, the variance, I uh, will use the symbol delta to represent the variance. But right here, actually, delta, delta squared. Okay. Data squared. This is the variance. Squared equals sum of x and the probability of x squared. Sorry, sum of x squared 
um, x squared x squared uh, times the probability of x times px minus mean squared. What's the mean squared? Squared. So I'm going to test it. Okay. And our other men in my our men will book. So that's the variance right there. Sum of x squared times probability of x. Now, then minus the mean squared. Now, next one is the standard deviation. Uh, standard deviation. Okay. Uh, standard deviation, which we represent with the symbol delta equals, it's just simply the square root of variance. The square root of the variance give us the standard deviation. Okay. Uh, now, um, uh, let's apply this. Some question. I always like to use an, app an application problem to solve this. So as you can see, you can know how to get the uh, values. And at the same time, know how they can be applied to real life situation. That's why I like to use application problem to solve this. Let's look, try this one. The, my favorite one is this one here. Um, it says, a bank president, make it big. And this is 16 or 14. Yeah, it says, a bank president claims or feel that the East Savings account customer has on average three credit cards. The following distribution represents the number of credit cards uh, people own. They find the mean invariance and the standard deviation. And then is the president correct? Okay. So yeah, there are two ways you can do it, but I'm gonna show you the shortcut method. The shortcut method involves having a table of values, and then you can get your answers from there. Then uh, the other method, this formula I gave you is for the shortcut method. So, um, so let's use it. Um, so that to get the table of values, we make you a uh, uh, tables this form. I'm gonna use this. Okay. All right, it's our table. Good. So this is our solution. Have the values we have here zero. So he this this band president was claiming that on average, um, three each seven second customer have three credit cards. So the following distribution represents number of credit cards people own. So number of credit card, number of cards, or number of credit cards of credit cards okay, which is our x, probability of x, just px. It was given. So zero credit cards one credit card, two credit cards, three, and then four, according to what the bank's data. For one credit card, for, zero, for no credit card, we have probability of 0.18, only 80% of them have it. It says, for, one, for those that have one credit card, is have 0.44, uh, for two credit cards, 0.27, 
or three credit cards is 0 0.038 and for four, 0 0.03. Okay. Now, the next thing is now is to, we make this bigger, I make it bigger. Now let's just find what it called because if you look, if you look at the formulas, let me copy all the, the formulas here. Um, you have that you have sum of x times px. So we need to get we need to get this part, x times px. So our x times px, x times px means well, exactly what it is this side, which is x times this px. So zero times, it means this times that. So zero times point zero point one eight is 0 0.00. Because you know that any real number multiplied by zero is zero. One times 0.44 is uh, 0 0.44. And if you follow that with two times this, so I got all the numbers here, and then let me write them down. So two times point two times point five four, um, zero point fifty four, and this one three times point zero eight would be I got um, zero point two four, two four, then uh four times point zero three is zero point one two I believe, you can double check it. Right. So now. We add all this total. We add all of this x times px. We add this plus this plus that plus that, and which we can uh, do with this most. It's my paperwork. I think I have a paper right here. Let's it. I have zero point one two. 0 0.00 plus 0 0.44 plus 0 0.54 plus 0 0.24 plus 0 0.12. So we can add this uh, with this most. We have, I'll have it in this form. That 0 0.00, of course, we will know that that one is zero. Uh, Zero is zero anyway, everywhere. So, a uh, point zero zero plus a uh, point four four plus point five four a uh, plus point two four that one point two two. Uh, do we have any? I think I have. Oh, I still have one more. Point one two plus. Point one two one point three four one point three four. So we have it here as one point three four one point one point three four. Now we need two more things for, for, for the variance. If you look at variance formula I said x squared times px minus means okay. So we need to get this x squared times px part. But to get that, we need to get the s square first. So we have s square. I need, I need one more column here. Um, I'm going to add one more column there. So one more column. OK, I'm going to draw it. So I need a, the s squared. And then x squared times px. x squared. x squared uh, simply means uh, each of these numbers here, square. Zero squared means zero times zero. Which is zero. One squared means one times one, which is one. Two squared means two times two, which is four. Well, let me let me uh, correct this. x squared. Okay, then 
three square means three times three, which is nine. And four square means four times four, which is 16. Now I can center all this. So it will look good. Yep. Now, so we need to get the part now, since we have our S squared times PX. So let's get it. Our X squared uh, times PX. So why, why, why we call this the shortcut method is that as soon as we finish it, we, we can easily pick up our answers from the table, you know? So that's why it's, it's much faster than the other method where you have to write on a horizontal work. Okay. So S K times P X means this one here multiply P X. I mean, for example, zero times 0.18 is 0 0.00. Uh, one times 0.44 is uh, 0 0.44. Then four times 0.27. I have all this since already. So four times 0.27 and four times 0.27 give us 1.08. Okay. 1.08. Then um nine times 0 0.08. I got um 0.72. Then 16 times 0 0.03, I got 2.72, uh, 2.72. Now we add all this, added them, and I got, actually this one not 2.72, this one is, we apply this, we will get 0 0.48, 0.48. That is for 16 times 0 0.03. So we add all this, all of them, we got 2.72. Okay. Now, with this, we are now ready to find the mean. Remember, remember the question says, find the mean variance and standard deviation. So the mean, I can copy the formula from here. Uh, the mean equals um, the sum of x times probability of x. That means our mean, our mean, becomes, excuse me, yep. I mean becomes, see, this is X times PX, and this is the sum right here. See the sum, see? So this one is for um, this, see? This symbol here is for, this is for the sum of X times PX. That's the right idea. So that our mean, um, mean becomes equal to 1.34. See? So you can see that once we finish it, we can pick our answer the stress from the table. Now, variance, any question on this? Any question on this? If you have a question, no please questions. ask. No questions. No. So no question. Good. Very, very good. Um next is the variance. The variance is the formula for the variance is right here. I'm gonna copy it down. Yeah. We can see this. Okay. Now it says S sum this, this symbol represents sum of say so sum of x squared times px minus main squared. So this is s squared times px right here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna highlight it so you can see it. Um s squared times px. It's right there. So, and this is this this part, only this part, S P F and Px. I see right there. So mean, we already have the mean from here. So 
that our variance will now become variance equals, it says sum of S squared times PS, which is 2.72 minus the mean, which is 1.34, so mean squared. So you're going to be 1.34, okay, squared, which is, um, 1.34 squared, which is um, when you do this on the calculator uh, with the calculator. Let me write it down and then we can solve it with the calculator. We have 2.72 minus 1.34 squared. So um I got I will take you to this most where we can do it. Um, 2.72 minus 1.34, 1.34 squared, the 0 0.9244, 0.9244. Triple nine two four four. This is uh, point nine two four four. Okay, zero point nine two four four. Now, that is the variance, and then because the equations also ask us to find the standard deviation. Now, I'll pick up the formula for the standard deviation, which is right here. It's always the square root of variance. So. The standard division is always the square root of variance. Um, the square root of variance. And our variance is 0 0.9244. Um, so to get our standard deviation, um, I'm going to take you to that table, that section. We have standard deviation. Um, it's square root of variance, uh, which, was, which means it is the square root of 0.9244. Okay. Now um, we can get this from this most. I can say 0.9244. Um, let's take it to this most. Uh, square root of 0.92. 9, 6. 9, 6. Okay. 0 0.96. Okay. 0.96. 0.96. Which is 0 0.96. Okay. Now. I'll copy this and paste it um, in your, in the main workbook. So you can have the answer right here. Okay. Right here. Any question on this? Any question on this? Please, if, please, if you have a question, ask me. I don't do text chatting or testing in while in a classroom. Um, so no questions then. Okay, good. Now, um. So this is basically, now let us answer part B. Part B says, is the president correct? Now this president is saying that um, on average, every savings account customers has on average three credit cards. But the average we have is 1.34. That is one average of one credit card. So he's not correct. So B part says, answer is no. B part, the answer is no. Um, 
because because the mean is um the mean is 1.34 cards 1.34 or you can call this average of average of one card one credit card pair each per savings account customer. See? So he's claiming that on average each savings account customer has um, uh, three credit cards. But I mean which is the average card they have is 1.34, which is approximately one credit card. So that, that's why he's not uh, correct. Um, questions? Okay. So no questions, good. Now, well, you can see why I decided to use one uh the application problem because we can use it learn how to get the main variance and standard deviation of a probability distribution and at the same time also um see answer the the implication of the you know the our results by saying either the the, the bank president is correct or that is not correct okay now we um now next thing we, uh, we're going to look at is what we call the expectation, expectation, okay, expectation. Now, expectation is just, um, let me make it bigger so you can see what I mean by that. Sometimes we call it expected value, okay? Sometimes we call it expected value. Now, expectation or expected value. Value. Now, before I show you, we, we work on this, I want to show you something. Now, in your homework, sometimes you see a table where they have all the numbers and they won't have this one. They won't have one of them. And they ask to find this one. It's maybe they put X there. And the fact is, find X. Now, the way to solve it is this. If you remember our class on Wednesday, I explained that for any for the, for the random variable to be classified as the probability distribution, the, the probability we add to, if you add all the um, probabilities of each values, it will give you one. So when you see this kind of question in your homework, where they remove one of the probabilities and put X, just subtract all this, add all the numbers here, this one, one, two, three, four, and subtract from one. So use one to subtract all this and you get the answer that will be here, even if it is here. Suppose that they have the number here, uh, 0 0.44, and they remove this one. Okay, then put X. Knowing that um, the sum of the probabilities must add to one, all you have to do is to add all this and then subtract your answer from one, and you get this one. So I, it just came to my mind that I have that kind of question in the homework. So just in case, if you see it. Now I'm going back to expectation. Expectation of a random variable of a discrete random variable simply means um, the theoretical average, the theoretical average of the random variable. Yeah. Now, you give us the average amount or average that does you, what we should expect for that random variable. So now, um, let's see, uh, because it's average, we use the same formula for finding the mean of a probability distribution to calculate expectation. And I will take you, to, I will explain with an example. I will take you to the um, to other workbook so we can get it. But expected value, expected value, which we represented by EX, sorry, excuse me. EX is, because it's a theoretical average, is the sum of X times 
uh, the probability of X. That gives us expectation or expected value. I'm gonna use two examples to illustrate how um, to calculate it. Like I say, I really like to use application problems so that you, you will, will kill two birds with one stone. You learn how to calculate it and then learn how to apply it um, at the same time. It says, look at I'm, I, usually, I want to use it a lottery to explain because I know that a lot of people buy lottery and then try to predict it. But in, in reality, actually, if, if, if we can predict it, then the, all the casinos will close down because they won't be making money. So if you win it, I mean, you people win sometimes. If you win it, it's pure luck. You can't predict it. And each time there's a, a, a game that people can win very quick. If they, if they discover that, they will close that game or they will readjust, you know, re, re, re adjust their system. It is skewed to cover the house. But it's good because um, so money raised from lottery I use for, to help our public school, you know, support the public school uh, recreation centers and so on and so forth. So, you know, if you, but if you're lucky, one of the lucky days, yeah, you can win. Anyway, let's get, get, get on to the point. Let me show you how we can apply this in real life. Say a lottery offers one $1,000 prize, one $500 prize, and $500 prizes. So it says, one thousand ticket are sold at $300 each. Find the expectation if a person buys one ticket. And if the winning ticket is returned to the pool after each uh, draw. Solution to this is this. Okay. Let me, um, I think I'm going to move this. I'm sorry, guys. Now, let us make the table first of all. It, go, it can go this way. Um, one one ten dollar prize, one five hundred dollar prize, and then five uh, hundred dollar prizes. So that means we're gonna need have um, um, all these numbers in. But I want to tell you something. Suppose you won um, a, a one thousand dollar prize. Now they'll give you a you bought the ticket three dollars. Of course they'll give you the check for one thousand dollars. But actually, they're net winning. Because nobody will give you three dollars back, so your net winning, winning will be one thousand dollars minus three dollars, will be like one nine hundred and ninety-seven dollars. That will be a net gain, even though they give you a check of one thousand dollars. So that's what we're gonna be using. So we have a gain win, um, for that we have a win and then the probability of that win. Okay, I'm gonna show you um. Okay, right here, okay. Win, I'll call it gain, maybe. Um, so win, win a ticket. No, you can, if you look at this, we have seven, seven chances of one, two, then plus five hundred dollar prizes. So you have win is our x, um, x. We have x variable. Oh, let me put it in front of it. Have studies. Okay. Okay, I think it should be, she should take care of it. Now I'm gonna make it no spacing. Okay, good. So we can have enough room. Okay, just one minute. Let me adjust this table. Okay, we need one more line on that. This is the average. No, no, no. Okay. Good. So that we have. Good, good. Now, we in X. X. Probability of X. X. Now, um, to win this, okay, so you can see that um, to win it, win, um, let me make it a win. So I will say put it this way, probability of winning 
x may be um, because they are we have the how many, how many prizes one two so each you bought a ticket so your probability of winning would be one because how many tickets we are sold? One thousand tickets we are sold out of one thousand. It should be um one over one thousand should be. Uh, let me see. Uh, if you are using a, you can move the decimal places three places to the left. Uh, actually, to the right. So, no, yeah, yeah, to the left, to the left. Now, so one over one thousand. One divided by a thousand. 0 0.001, you can see right there, 0 0.001, um, 0 0.001, okay? Now, so each of these prizes have it. The uh, 1,000 price has probability of one over 1,000. $500 has a probability of one over 1,000. So let's put all this in. Now, now, but to lose, lose, you know, the price, that means lose three dollars. Probability of lose and probability of X complement. To lose uh, X complement, that's the lose. Equals um now you have see, even though to win is one of one of a thousand, but you have five prizes. And you cannot win in one ticket. One ticket cannot get you a thousand and also get you another 500. One ticket cannot get you two prizes. So they are mutually exclusive. So if that means for lose, to lose means the uh, point of, of not winning, so we call it loss, will be since there are seven prizes. So one minus um, one minus one times, I mean, sorry, seven times this amount here. So one minus um, seven times this amount. I mean, one, one, one minus point um, zero zero seven. That will give us point of losing. I mean, zero point. Um, if we do it on the on the calculator, we're gonna have one minus uh, point zero zero seven. One minus point zero zero seven. I got 0 0.993, okay, um, 0 0.993, 0 0.993. Why do I say that? Why, why not say one minus 0 0.001? Of course I can say it, but that is only for one prize. Remember we have seven prizes, one $1,000 prize, one $500 prize, then five $100 prizes. So there are seven of them, which are mutually exclusive since one ticket cannot give you two prizes, you know. So once you get 0.993, once you have that, you can now put the table. Again, if you so suppose you bought, so, so somebody who won a thousand dollar prize, like I said, they give you the check for one thousand dollars, but yeah, men gain, they are real gain, because nobody will pay you back the amount you paid for the ticket, which is three dollars. So your net gain will be 993. So um, 993 dollars. So 997, because if you subtract three dollars from one thousand, you get 997. The same thing applied here. If you subtract 500 from three dollars from 500, you get uh, 497. Because you know, like I said, nobody will give you back the um, the the money you spent to buy the ticket. So they give you the check of 500 dollars, but you have uh, if you calculate within yourself, your net game is 497. So for the for the rest of the price, which is hundred dollars, you have ninety seven. Because I said that five of them, ninety seven, ninety seven, ninety seven, and one more, ninety seven. I'm gonna add one more, two more here, here, one this here, okay. Then now actually two. Now suppose, of course, most time you lose. In that case, you lose the three dollars you spent. That would give us negative three dollars, okay. And total. Now, Px is, for winning, 
one zero zero one for all of them for the same price. Okay, zero point zero zero one. 0.001 as 0.001 as 0.001 as 0.001 as 0.001 now if we apply uh, for losing we have 0 0.993 see now let us arrange our table properly so you can see it um we arrange it properly Make it uh, bigger. Okay. Good. And then, you know, increase the number is 11 to make it 14. Now, so now, next thing is remember the our formula is for expectation is sum of x times ps. Okay, let me put it here. Okay, let me, uh, let me go and get it and put it right here. Now, the formula for our expectation of, of is the sum of x times probability of x. So, which means that we are going to get this part, need this part x times px. So we have x times px right here, x times px. So I mean, you multiply this to this times that. So when I multiply it, I have this number for 997. This time this 0.497. Okay. 97 times this we got 0 0.097. Okay. 0 0.097. 0 0.097. You multiply this this times that. 0 0.097, 0.097, and when we multiply the negative three times 0.993, I got this number that I have here, negative 2.979, uh, so when you add all this, see this is S times PX, when you add all this, I got negative um, $1. Which is a, a loss. This implies that in the long run, if you are gambling, if you are you know buying, you keep losing. Sometimes uh, the luck uh, lock will smile, my, my smile at you. So in our own case, I'm gonna put it in this form. The expected value, which is sum of x times p x equals negative um 1.000, which is a dollar loss of a dollar which is a uh, loss so i'm gonna paste it there okay so that means um you are at a loss most of the time because of the negative sign okay any question on this Uh, Nobody is in the talking mood today. I'm sure you're you are missing your Easter. <laughs> anyway, I will be finishing very soon. I want to show you something there before then we'll, we can we we'll round up. We'll, we'll be, I'll leave you so you can go and celebrate your Easter. Okay. Now, look at this. I want to show you how this can be applied to business. If you apply this to business and you get a negative answer, that means that, that, that it will not be a profitable business. All right. Or maybe you have to re re recalibrate your expectation for that business. Okay, let's see. Solution. It says a sky resort loses seventy thousand dollars per season when it snows, when it does not snow very well, much, and makes two hundred fifty thousand dollars when it does snow a lot. Now, the probability that it will snow at least some five inches, that is a good season, is 40%. Find the expectation for profit. Okay? Solution, um, the best way to do this is to make a table. Uh, I'm going to make a table, okay? 
and then add, um, make it three columns. Okay. One column, make it three columns. Okay, this is um, three columns. Okay, now we can now um, highlight it, make it a uh, no space. Good. Now the profit X, profit over X. Okay. Then X times PX, X times PX. Sorry, I have PX, profit of X first. Then X times PX. Okay. Now uh, this is our profit. Okay. Um. Okay. Um, we we'll soon be done. Don't worry, deep. <laughs> so now, the Sky Resort loses seventy thousand dollars when it snowed very much and makes $250,000 when it does not snow. So now the probability that if you snow at least five inches is 40%, that means they have 40% chance. So find the expectation. So profit, if it snows 70%, 40, uh, 75 inches, they'll make 250,000. So we have 250,000. Oh, let me make this clear so you can see it very well. 250,000. Is probably is 0.4, that 40 percent. Now, if it doesn't slow like that, they loses 70,000. So we have negative 70,000. And the, if the probability of making money, profit is 40 percent, then the probability of losing is 60 percent because 100 percent minus 40 percent is 60 percent, which is 0.6. And then we can have our total here. Okay. Uh, two thousand. I have x times px, two fifty times point four. I calculated it here, and I got um, I got two fifty times point four. I think I have it somewhere. Yep, yeah, I got hundred thousand. Then negative seventy thousand times point six. I got um, negative forty two thousand. So when I added these two. 100,000 plus negative for 2,000. I can show you from this month, this month. Um, 100,000 plus um, negative for the 2,000, 58,000, which is positive. Um, 58,000, which is positive. Uh, 58,000. So that means expected value of making profits is, is the sum of x times px, which I can put from here. Um, sum of x times px, um, which is uh, 58,000, which is a profit. So it's a good business. You're gonna be a good business. So long as you have your probabilities uh, where were estimated and you plug it in here, um, it will give, give you a good profit. So the expectation now becomes here, uh, 58,000, which is a profit. Any question for me, class? I know you guys are, can't wait to, to go to celebrate your Easter. So let me just take your down your attendance and then you can leave. But if you have any question, please ask while I'm doing that. Um, I got Ania here. I got Nicholson Chambers, Bennett. Okay, who is Nick? Have um, two, three, four, five. Okay. If you don't have any question there now, you have you have a good is uh, happy Easter to you guys, and I'll see you next week. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank. Okay.